Hello, my name is Tyler, and I will be running you through how to unwrap in Max and also in ZBrush. So, first thing you want to do is apply an unwrap modifier and then define what areas you want unwrapped, and it kind of varies from thing to thing, uh, depending on what you have. Like, I'm not going to care about the seams too much in the crotch area and the butt area because he wears pants. The section out the head and the ears and uh, the arms, the legs, the hands, the feet, uh, and down the sides uh, to just kind of break it apart. Later on I put some of them back together afterwards. It's just easier that way for me. That's what I've been doing. Right now I'm working around the arm. So I'm going to do a seam underneath, which I already did. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go around the wrist right now and then split the hands in half afterwards. There's really no specific ways to do things, there's just certain ways that I like to do things. And then I go up the inside because, you know, if he's not wearing pants, then it's just this probably a less looked area. Now I'm splitting the hands in half here. Now I'm splitting the hands in half here. I don't know how actually right this is, but it's, this is what I've seen and been doing, so it's been working for me. As long as you have good polyflow, you can get C right here, it's a little iffy. And back at the wrist, it's a little iffy. As long as you have good polyflow, it's pretty easy to get done. Like, you can get a full unwrap done fairly quickly. So now that I have it broken apart, you uh, define the scenes, and then I start selecting locations, and then pelting them, and then relaxing them. But I uh, make it bigger and then I uh, stretch it more or I would uh, relax it. It just gives it a little more room. And then I kind of work on each piece, breaking it apart. So now I'm just kind of breaking the pieces and kind of roughly putting where about where they're going to go. There's a button that I like to use in the UV unwrap that actually uh, makes them the size you need. So when I get done, I'll do that. I can even package them with it, but I don't really like using that tool. The hands sometimes are tricky, but you just make the rim bigger so that there's no overlap or anything. And then you relax from there. Now, I didn't turn up the amount right away on the relax, so it kind of takes a while for the first two or three hand things, something like that.
And right now I'm not really worried about the size of anything. Like I said, uh, later on I'll resize it and I'll even make the head bigger than it should be because I want a little more detail in it. ZBrush kind of has the same, you can kind of do the same thing. I mean, obviously you can do the same unwrap and make the head bigger. But you, there's a way to put more detail in the face. You always want the most amount of detail you can in specific areas like one being the face because obviously that's the first place everyone's going to look. That's, you know, when you communicate with someone, you look at their face. And I forgot to unwrap the feet all the way, because there's going to be boots on it, so it really doesn't matter, but I'm just doing it for the sake of the video. This is generally how I do feet. I don't know if there's a better way or not. A lot of times you'll have toes, depending on... You just do a naked model like I am right now. Now I'm taking the ears and breaking them out. Um, there's, there's a few different ways I do this. Sometimes I attach them or detach them. Sometimes I don't. I don't. This time I actually detached it, then reattached it later on. It just, uh, it's a little easier to work with things if you break it off, I think. And right now I already have the maps on the face, the checker map, and I'm reattaching the ears. And I pretty much did the same technique for the face. You just grab it, pelt it, and then, uh, relax it. It might have to be a little bit of a fix up afterwards. Nothing I'm sure you can't handle. So now I resize it. They kind of all collapse over each other, but that's alright because I'm going to grab my uh, elements and then pull them where I want. Like I said, these things don't matter, so then right about now I decide to overlap them and then shrink them and then throw them into a corner because it doesn't really matter. Um, and later on you'll see the way that I put, I put the maps in sideways because I generally do all my map work in ZBrush anyways, so it's not a big, you know, detriment or whatever to, to where it is. As long as it's in the box and you can do it in ZBrush, then it's going to come out the way it should. It's going to look better than by hand generally, I think. Now I'm just kind of placing where I want because I'm going to rearrange some of these later. And there's a, a tool on the right that rotates it. I just clicked it. I place it in order and then I start attaching uh, the shoulders together and then I put the arms uh, back together and then I relax all that so it kind of smooths out to where it should be. And I, you know, look at the model while I do it <clears throat> to make sure it's like not uh, pulling or what it's doing exactly. So there's the first relax. I liked it so I was like, alright, I'll attach the arms now. And then I have a shortcut set up, but you'll see me click, and, and what I hit is a control shift s and it just brings it, you see what it's doing, it's bringing the other end to where you select, so it's kind of handy. And I relax again, keep hitting it because I like what it's doing. And I attach the last little parts because I realize I'm just gonna look at the armpits. Sure, weird, I guess. And I think I relax again. Yeah, I was gonna say if I don't, it should. And I kind of start putting everything where I want. And this is what I'm talking about. Normally. I wouldn't do it sideways, but I, I use ZBrush, so it really doesn't matter as long as it's all packed in there. 
And I actually want to save this uh, map for later because I'm going to put the eyes and the mouth in there. I'm going to do everything else like the pants and the boots that he's got and the extra belt on a separate map. So I'm going to have two maps and all. I'm going to bake this one in. I saved out the UVW. So it's in there. And now I'm selecting the eyes and the teeth and I put an unwrap on them. Uh, actually, I selected all three, that's what I meant, and then I put a wrap on it, and uh, you can put them on the same map. And here, you can either go around the outside like I started to do, or give up on it, and then uh, decide there's a better way, and you grab the actual material, and you just hit the planer, and it flattens down. You'll see that in a second. And uh, on the Z, I think it is? Anyway, you hit the planer map or whatever. What it was on. But yeah, you hit the planner map, and I, I, uh, I relaxed it, uh, fly by, or just say start relax, you know where it works. And eyes uh, kind of have a decent sized texture space, because like I said, it's something you look at, but you know, I don't really know how much detail I'm going to add into it, I guess it all depends. And here's the teeth, I don't know why they would do something like that. But. And I'm not animating the mouse, so it'd just be easier to just pull the teeth out so they're flat and leave it at that. If you relax, it kind of acts funny. At least my teeth didn't. I kind of did a quick uh, model of the teeth, nothing special. I don't even think I'm going to do a normal form or anything. And then you get it down to size and cram it in there when you need it. I just decided to take up the rest of the room. It could have been smaller, but I decided to take up the rest of the room. That's or some of the room that's in there. See, there's tons of space. I could still start putting things in there if I really, really wanted to, but I kind of just wanted to keep the body separate from everything else. And then save it out again, collapse it. You can go Z it, whatever. or uh, make a template for it. I like to go big on the sizes so that I can always go down later. I know 2048 isn't huge, like 4K I might do, 496, um, and then go back down uh, where I need, but sometimes I know what I'm going to do, and 2048 is just good enough for 10, 24, whatever, JPEGs, for the temp, because if I need it later I'll use it. I probably won't need it since I'm doing this in ZBrush, so you have your high poly model, I want just the model, and I'm showing right now that you can hide and unhide, you want to lower all the level sources, and these already have the scenes in it, to, so I could show you how a good ZBrush would look, and it looks exactly like mine and Max, you know, you can, ZBrush is very nice for UVW, sometimes there's not good uh, flexibility with it, but that's showing, and then you copy, you clone it, then you copy it, and you paste it to your actual model, and I just paste the UV, so it's on there, but it was already on there. From there, there's different things you can do, uh, like one, I'm showing the map size, again, it's 2048, and I wanted to show the texture, to show how it laid out good, and here I'm showing that you can actually, that's a mask, but you can actually paint on it, for people that don't know, poly paint, and then go uh, apply it as a poly paint texture, and look at the texture, you can bake that off, right there I just unwrapped it, it's on the unwrap and baked it off, I can take that off and apply it as a diffuse, or texture as they call it, um, you can export it, sometimes you flip B, I think you want to flip B all the time, I'm not sure, I forget. But uh, you can export it as a you know, whatever file, and then apply that as its color. You can do that for specular, which is cavity map technically, if you're using maps. You can turn your cavity map into specular. You can use normal displacement. Uh, you can do different settings for all those. I think displacement, ha your low poly has to be under 5,000 points or polygons, whatever program you're working in. This is how you do normal maps. You have to have it on a slow subdivision level. And then you open up normal map and you have those selections and you hit fake or you hit the create. 
and then you say clone normal map and go over to the texture area and you save it or export it. You might want to flip feed it. I don't know, experiment with it. I can't really remember right now. I'm kind of new to this. And then here's the other way to do maps. And this is how you do UVs in ZBrush. You work on the clone, then you can, it, it can do it itself, but it's kind of crappy. And it, you see, it's kind of all in the spots I don't want it. So you have to paint to where you want it to attract or to stay away from. Red is stay away from. Face, the front, I'm probably doing more than you should do. You want to be general about this, I'm pretty much don't follow the rules, so I do it my way. So I want to pretty specific, and for purposes I'm not going to go in spending more time than I need to. And I wasn't at this point sure how I wanted to see it, so I kind of went down the center of the back without thinking. And then I went down the sides, and then I decided to redo it. And everywhere you paint the blue, it's going to try to attract more to that location. You're going to leave it up to ZBrush ultimately, but uh, you have a little bit of say in what ZBrush wants. Now you kind of have it worked out, you can hit unwrap, and there's your seams. They're not too good. So I have to go back in and tell it better where not to go and where to go. And it's kind of based on edges. So, you're painting polygons, and well, you're actually painting the edges, but it spreads out on the polygons. So, here's me kind of reworking a little bit. I kind of, at this point, decided why would I go up the side if I'm going up the back for demonstration purposes. I'm almost there. And it's starting to look better. I like the hand. You can erase also. And another thing is after you get your UVWs, you can go to max and bring it back. Uh, I'll show you at the end how you can... There's the unwrap of it. I'll show you at the end how you can uh, kind of fix some seams. Notice the two on the back of his legs. But you hit clone again, then you go back to your model, put a texture on it, because it keeps the white for some reason, and then you say uh, paste, and it pastes the UVs onto that model. And I forgot to go a little sub again. Now I'm there, and then you can say create. Uh, oh, well I'm showing the sub-levels of the body actually, for anyone that doesn't know what happens. You kind of build up as you go. And I'm showing how many 11 million polygons in this, just this model, the body. And there's the normal map. Bring it over to the texture area, then you say export. But I don't want to do all that. It looks like he's ready to go to max, fix the scenes, and then come back. You can either export it all, or visible layers, or just one layer. It's in max now, it exported. And it actually and it brought the normals with it. There's some scene issues I gotta address later. And there's different ways to leave ZBrush and uh, apply it in better ways. Because my tangent's on right now, so that's uh, 
kind of why it's having issues, I guess. I'm not exactly sure on that one. But anyways, there's the scenes I apply to UVW scenes, the exact same scenes, but I want to fix that one on the leg for demonstration purposes, and then you can bring it back into Max or ZBrush or save out the UVWs. It's I know what you want to do. It's actually on the left side. I'm kind of looking at the back right now. So, you know, all this areas can be addressed, but I ended up just uh, doing this one. So there, that one's fixed. You can bring it back to, you know, ZBrush. This isn't the best on ramp, obviously. It's just a quick, rough thing. And that's my video.